I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. One of the things that Inkscape is really good at is typography. I like doing these type of designs, so I'm gonna show you today how you can do a flip text effect like this. It's pretty easy to do. We're just gonna use one of the path effects called perspective envelope in a simple gradient. So if you wanna get started, you can do the same word to the same word, or I thought it'd be more interesting to have like an opposite. So start to finish. As long as the words are about the same length, it'll work. So let's get going here. This is the page. I have it set up differently than you might have as your default. If you wanna do this, you go to file, document properties, and you'll see you have an option to change the color of the page. Go to any color you want. We'll do black. The format is A4, that's just the sizing. And orientation, I have it set to landscape. It's just a nice way to have us all on the same scale if you wanna follow along. So let's write our text out. I'm gonna do the start to finish. Start, if I go up to the modification area, I'm using Enter. It's a free open source font, so thanks to Google. I'm gonna to go to heavy for the style and for size, let's try 165. It'll be invisible if I bring this onto the page right now. So down in your color ribbon, you can change it to white or you can go up to object, fill and stroke. And on your fill and stroke menu, if you're on the fill tab, you can change the color here. There's start, control D to duplicate that, change it to finish. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think the effect works well, even if the letters aren't the same, but let's get it close. That's almost perfect. Maybe we change the kerning on start. If you highlight it and go up to character spacing, we'll do negative five. That will work fine. Okay, so to use a path effect, you need to make this object a path. Super easy to do. It's selected, path, object to path. Same for finish, path, object to path and let's slap a gradient on each of these if you've never used linear gradients it's right here click on it the default will be whatever the base color was it's going to go from base color to full transparency we need to change that so click on the arrow so you're on this side of the gradient and down on the alpha slider which is for transparency move it all the way to full opacity white to white doesn't do anything so we'll change this side to black experimenting i found out it works a little better if you drag in the white a little bit and the black a touch as well that's all there is to the setup except we have to change the gradients going left to right we want it to go from top to bottom this tool right here it's called the edit gradients tool click it and you'll take the white side put it near the top and the black side play around with it but you do want to have some darkness towards the bottom for now that's good to go if you think about when it flips down to the bottom part the gradient needs to be reversed so white will be at the bottom of the letters and dark will be towards the top rick from the edit bay here the second gradient is the same as the first just in reverse doing a time lapse to speed things up all right let's do a save just in case path effects sometimes can get temperamental an added step just to make things nice and precise. Up here, align and distribute. If you click this, the menu says, where do you want to align this to? We'll do it relative to page. It might be last selected, go to page. And this one right here will let you center it up. Oops, that one was selected. It'll center up whatever you had selected like that. All right, let's do it. We've got start selected, path, path effects. The new menu comes up blank. Don't worry, you can hit the delta and see all the choices. We want perspective envelope type set it to perspective and the key is to choose mirror movements in vertical nothing happens if you didn't know where to look this is where you go you hit edit paths by node and now you can see all the nodes of the text and let me zoom in these little tiny nodes here that is the path effects node that will do the effect for us let me show you how it works real quick before we do the design if i grab that node on the corner if i drag that node to the right you can see the perspective is being mirrored vertically on both sides, keeps things nice and uniform. I can bring it up, out, and it does, <laughs> it does this. <laughs> so with that, we can then create the motion of one, two, three, four, as it folds down ourself. Let's do control Z, back to the way it was. The very first one will barely drag it out, just a tiny bit like that, that's good enough. Control D duplicates it. The duplicated copy has all the same path effects, everything. Let's drag it out a little bit and down a little bit. Not too crazy. They're stacked on top of each other right now. It won't do the effect until we drag them apart. So only go a little bit like that. Control D duplicates it. Take that one, go a little bit further. Control D for the last one and bring this so it is 
almost folded to the center. That's all we want. One, two, three, four. And just for the illusion, I'll control D that last one. We'll bring that one straight flat. That's going to be the illusion of it switching into the second word, finish. All right, let's now separate them. I'll bring this down almost halfway, just do halfway of the page. And you can start to stack them so it looks more interesting. I want to say that's a good start but that'd be two on the nose for the puns. We'll just leave it. Go to the align and distribute. They're all gonna line up versus the page here. And before we move on, we can play with the gradient now. So I can go up to the first one, double click. I've got my handle and see, maybe I want the top one to be darker. I'll go to the second one. All I'm doing is bringing it up a little bit to have the darkness creep up. I think you can also do it at the gradient level itself, but that gets dangerous. What I mean is if I go to the fill and stroke menu, I can play around with the actual gradient and it affects all of them, which you may not want. Move this up and we'll do the finish side. Same exact approach. I have finish selected, path effects. It should already be in your tray here. Perspective envelope. Make sure you're on perspective, mirror movements in vertical, edit paths by node will let you do something with it. And this time you grab from the bottom. So if I take the bottom node, you can kind of fold it this way. See the motion there, control Z. The first one, I just dragged it over to the side a touch, control D. The second one you can bring up, control D. The third one, don't go too far out, bring it up some more, control D. Did I do control D or control S? We'll find out in a second. I guess we did it. Now I can put them into place and finish. Okay, damage control here. Let's grab everything. First of all, go to the line and distribute, center it. That's a bit better. This one can come down. And that's good. I think I'll just leave the gradient the way it is. Maybe this one can be a little bit darker so it casts a shadow. That leads us to the effect I wanna do for everything. It looks good. We'll do one more grab everything center. And the last effect is just a drop shadow. Everything's together. Go to filters, shadows and glows, drop shadow, you get a pop-up box. This is preset to the way I wanted it, but one thing you should always check on blur color. See, this is defaulted to blue for some reason. Since I'm working with black and white, I'll slide this blur color over to black, go back to options. When I hit live preview, you see the drop shadow there and the drop shadow here. It's subtle, but it's enough to have your eye feel like there's some weight to it. And this is just all set to blur radius one, horizontal one, vertical one. Shadow type will really mess things up if you do it wrong. If you're on outer cutout, you're gone. So stay on outer and we'll do apply. Have fun with it. This wasn't a request, it's something I felt like doing because I thought it looked interesting. If you have any questions or ideas of something you want to see a tutorial on, let me know in the comments and we'll see you next time.